Hi, everyone. Karen here with something exciting to share with you. So as you know, my whole mission in life is to help you become a user and not a follower. And what I mean by that is whatever your setting or school has asked you to use, you know, be it a scheme or a specific approach, when you have the right tools in your toolbox, and that is the math subject knowledge and the pedagogical understanding of how children learn maths, you will find that you begin to use that scheme, not just follow that scheme. And this is a massive game changer. So what I am putting together here to share with you as an example of the sorts of things I do with my members and those people who work with me all the time. It doesn't always look like this, but this is the principle behind it. I'm going to zoom in here. And this is a new way that I'm thinking of sharing this sort of advice with you. So lots of you I know at the moment, you're teaching circles amongst other types of shapes. And you've been asking lots and lots of questions, brilliant questions, and you're realizing that you don't know what you don't know. And that is the way we all are. So you're asking questions, you're challenging your knowledge, you're being really open to learning, and that is taking you to some brilliant, brilliant places. And that's exactly what I'm here to do to help you. So this is a, a sheet or kind of like a crib sheet, really, that I would be printing out and giving to each of my team members and I'd be making a big version of it available on the wall when we are specifically looking at sharpening the tools to do with circles. Of course, you're going to be thinking about circles all year, but there is a time where it will be a, a sort of tighter focus in your teaching. Now, I'm going to go through this and I'll tell you a little bit more about why it looks the way it does and how to use it. And then you can ask me any questions that you want. So the most important thing is you must get your facts right. You are the equivalent to a doctor in that you heard me say this before, many of you, a doctor who didn't understand the human body, didn't understand the drugs, didn't understand the treatment, shouldn't be prescribing that treatment. And it's exactly the same for us. And all of us, pretty much, me especially, me included, had a pretty rotten start in maths not because our teachers didn't want us to learn, but because they'd been taught in the same way that, that maths, we were led to believe, was about procedures, memorization, speed, accuracy, and all of those things. And it leads us to believe that we can't learn maths, and it leads us to be frightened often of maths. And what lies at the bottom of this is a lack of our own tools and the right tools. So the first thing we must do when it comes to learning about circles is we have to get our definition right. Don't get hung up at this stage about how you're going to teach the children. That's second, you have to understand it yourself first. And you will find that your current knowledge gets in the way of learning new things. So I want you to be really, really very strong here mindset wise and empty out your current knowledge onto the table, push it out the way, start with a clean slate and build up from that. And of course, if you discover that something you knew before was right, bring it back onto the table, that's fine. So let's have a look here. So I've taken my knowledge from the text that I recommend for all of you, which is Mathematics Explained for Primary Teachers by Derek Haylock. There are many other books, but if we start off with one we can all talk about that is highly regarded and very reliable, that is a great common source for us to all refer to and talk about. Incredibly easy to get copies of this if you are sort of UK based and some of you a bit further away, it's often best to get secondhand copies sent out to you. So he says, a two dimensional shape consisting of all the points that are a given distance from a fixed point called the center of the circle. And then I found another definition to help clarify that even further from Cambridge Dictionary, a continuous curved line, the points of which are always the same distance away from a fixed central point or the area inside such a line. So we need to thoroughly understand what this is. And some of the things I've written on here will help you understand this better. So remember, it's you we're trying to change. It's you we're investing in. And when you know what you're talking about and you have the tools, not only will your confidence soar, but your planning will change, your, your teaching, your interactions, everything will change. 
So here is the expert language our teams need. And again, don't get hung up yet about what we're going to say to the children. That gets in the way of a lot of people's thinking. This is for you. So we don't just need language, we need definitions. Because if we just have language and other people define that language incorrectly and inconsistently, then nobody is learning well. It's really important that we're all saying the same thing. So this is what we need to understand. This is the bit that most of us have been concerned and talking about, what's this called? So before we get tied up in what it's called, let's think, what is it? So this here, you can see we'd all describe this as a line and this line is containing a space, but the line is produced by the fact that we start with the center and we have a distance here. And if we pivot from the center, we have infinite points that appear and this is creating what we call the circumference, but it is all about starting from that central point, like it says over here. And we've got that distance and wherever you are from that central point, it will be equidistant, equal distance to the edge. So that radius there, I never learned to think of it like this. That radius is that distance there. This special curved line, if you want to give it its special name, it's circumference. And like I've said to you recently, no three or four year old I've met has a problem with Tyrannosaurus Rex. So don't think they can't learn circumference. They might not say it correctly, but they love big words. It's not about what it's called, however, it's what it is and how it comes to be that is more important. That's the understanding. The diameter, you can start anywhere on the circle and with a straight line, you've got to pass through the middle and wherever you end up, that distance is the diameter. So that's going you know, again, you couldn't do that, has to go through the center. So this is really important, I hope, interesting stuff to discuss with our team. There are many misconceptions that adults have, and the misconceptions that adults have stem from the wrong subject knowledge and experiences where we've been taught the wrong thing. Don't get hung up on it. That's the way it is, and we can be the first generation to change this. So aside in geometry, so the study of shape in mathematics has to be straight. So can you see there that therefore a circle does not have any sides? You can even, one of the definitions of a circle, one of its properties is it doesn't have something. So it doesn't have any sides. A circle is also two-dimensional. And we talk about 2D and 3D shapes. And most people, again, their subject knowledge is very shaky here. You've got to ask yourself, what does that mean? So the first two dimensions are width and height or width and length. So it doesn't have any depth. So therefore you can't hold it in your hands because it, to hold it in your hands, no matter how thin it was, the thinnest piece of paper on the planet, it's still got depth because you're holding it. So think about the, those words. It could be, you know, they're generally interchangeable. You have width, length, width, height, width, even breadth, you could argue as well, but it's the depth that's missing. When something has depth, that's the third dimension, hence 3D shapes. So some three-dimensional shapes, those with width, height, and depth, such as cylinders, have circular surfaces. And again, this is something that I didn't know I didn't know. They, When you think about a cylinder, there are three surfaces. Two of them are flat. One of them is curved. But faces have to be flat. So a cylinder has two flat faces which are circular. You can see where the, the circles are the circular faces on the cylinder, but the curved part of a cylinder is a surface. Those faces are also surfaces, but they just have this special name of faces as well. Don't get hung up on remembering what I'm saying because that's memorization. Get hung up on understanding what I'm saying because what I'm doing is describing properties and then classifying and it takes time if you're not used to thinking like this. So how do we explain this to children? Well the way that I would have liked to have learned and I'm sure you'll feel the same is if I'd experienced creating circles I would understand what makes a circle a circle and they will come up with their own language they will start to tell you what is meaningful to them and of course they will absolutely love it. When you make anything, so I'm going to go back to my typical analogy of cooking. 
when you cook something, you understand what's gone into it. You understand how it was constructed. So you have a completely different appreciation of it. And it also gives you skills to be able to do it for yourself. It's very different than just eating the end product. So here, the idea of attaching, get yourself a fixed point. It could be you with your finger on something as long as you don't move it. But you can use things like um, a golf tee or a tent peg here, this kind of thing. Stick it into something. Um, I'm thinking you might want to use clay or mud. You could put it in a can or something. So you can, as long as you're holding that still or it's being held still in some way. And then you're going to attach a piece of string to that. Attach a piece of string to a mark making tool like a paintbrush dipped in water. Um, paintbrush dipped in paint, obviously. You could have your chalk, anything like that, a pencil. And when you pull that string tight and you show the children what to do and you start to move, the string is going to hold the pencil or the whatever mark making tool the equal distance from the center and it's by default then going to create a curve so we can start understanding the science that's going on here by changing the length of the string you will change the size of the circle let them find this out you could overlap circles to create patterns so you know things that will last on paper and so forth but also things that won't last like water with paintbrushes outside you could use things like your spinning cake stands. So what we might call like a lazy Susan, which is a circular device from decades gone by where people would put food on it and then turn it on the table. And I've even seen, I think it was a clay stand with the wonderful Oakwood nursery that I've worked with in the past. They put their children on this in an all in one suit, face down, tummy on the, the clay turntable because they're very strong, of course and spun the child around with a paintbrush in their hand. And I must find the pictures and share that with you because that was just amazing. For me, then that's the time to start spotting circles. And you can talk about what reminds you of a circle and what is a circle. And it's not necessarily about getting it right. It's about their reasoning. So when we look at things like concentric circles in trees and so forth, you will find that it won't, they won't be true circles, but they will remind us of circles. So again, think about when I've talked to you about the looseness of with which we talk about things in real life and then the preciseness that we have when we, what our subject knowledge needs to be. So we're being really precise in our subject knowledge and then we're going to experience it in a looser way. I mean, obviously a lot of this is not going to maybe go to plan to begin with and it's the, the process that's more important. So here's some ideas. Um, if, you, if you've been around as long as I have, you'll remember there was a toy called Spirograph, which you put a pencil into plastic shapes and you created uh, sort of, you know, circles and concentric circles and so forth. Really nice thing to do as well. They're bound to be still around. Um, anything then that's got circles in it to do with art. And again, don't forget, it can be things that aren't circles, things that remind you of circles. Uh, look at circular patterns in nature. Sometimes they will be absolutely perfect, but sometimes they will remind us of it. And then things like collecting anything that you can pivot the string to, or if you come up with another type. I think a few people were suggesting things that might, I'm trying to think like, oh, if you had a knitting needle, maybe would that work? Something that was already, you know, rather than being wobbly like a piece of string, it was already straight and strong long as you can tie something to both ends so you might need to think creatively about bits of sort of stronger wire that have got some way of tying things to the end and then go to town you know one of the children one, one of the schemas children have is turning and spinning you can start looking at the difference between spirals and circles as well so I'm going to shrink this down and just remind you what the point of all of this is and to reflect the kind of training that I am producing and will go on to produce that I want to give you something that you can share with your team that is not about an A4 sheet with a week's planning on it, because that is the recipe book. And I want you to go on the cooking course first. This is the cooking course. When you get your knowledge secure, your tools in your toolbox, your confidence built, then you will look at 
planning that either you do preferably or someone else's ideas are shared with you or a scheme and you will know what needs changing you will know what to keep the same and you will know how to deliver it you will know how to respond to the children you will know how to notice what it is they're doing in their play that will feed directly into your planning so I hope all this makes sense everyone and um, watch it coming to an inbox near you very soon because I'm going to give you this one for free